I started to discuss how people in the church are on their way to hell because it is so easy for us and those of us that are in the church to get sidetracked by a works-based righteousness and a works-based sanctification. It's very easy to get into works-based salvation, especially when you have leaders, teachers, pastors, evangelists, fivefold, whatever you want to call them, that don't centralize their message on the gospel. I'm not talking about making a gospel call at the end of the message when people have nothing to respond to. You know, a lot of times we, we preach a message and then there's an altar call. And unless that person has been having their heart worked on outside of the message and in the week and days prior to the Sunday message, they are not coming to the altar or responding to the call of salvation because of that message. And that is wrong. At the end of a message, a person should be wanting to come and respond to the message. Because if they've been worked on all outside of a church message, they don't need to come to the altar in the church to get saved. And maybe that's another uh, another uh, bad misconveyance of what it means to get saved. You don't have to get saved in a church. You don't have to come to an altar to get saved. You don't even have to say a prayer. With the mouth, confession is made unto righteousness. And with the heart of man believes. The most important part is that you believe actually in your heart. There's a lot of people, you can go, out die, you can go outside right about now and ask anybody, are you saved and how do you know? And people are going to say, because I said a prayer once or because I'm a good person or whatever. The power isn't in the prayer to save you. The power is in the belief. The power is actually in the gospel of Jesus Christ being preached. Death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which saves a person. And what does that have to do with the church? I'm against getting saved, preaching the blood, and then preaching on other quote unquote kingdom realities and kingdom principles and all this other stuff because the life is in the king if a message can be preached and the bottom line at the end of the day not drive me to admire God more and dig more and respect Christ more and honor Christ more then it's 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 I don't want to say it falls on deaf ears but it's just like what is really the purpose you know, you don't just you don't just preach the gospel and let that be that and move on to greater and bigger mm -hmm. things because there's nothing greater and bigger to move on to. Jesus asked his disciples, are y'all going to leave me too? After he told the Pharisees and Sadducees and his other disciples that except you eat my blood and or eat my flesh and drink my blood, then then you have no part of me. And they left because they really didn't understand what he was saying. And he turned around to his disciples and said, are you going to leave me too? And they said, where else do we have to go? And you have the words of life. Jesus has the words of life. But if we're not focused on a relationship with a real living Christ, <laughs> if we're not focused on a real relationship with a real living Christ, our, li our real risen Lord, then, then what are we doing? What are we really doing? And the gospel just isn't being preached like it should be in church. It's just not. And most people that are in church, they they quickly fall into a works-based righteousness because there is no appreciation for the goodness of God in the gospel. We are so quick to move away from the gospel and its application into every part of our lives, into how the gospel applies to marriage and how marriage relates to uh, the marriage of Jesus to his church. There's so much richness in the gospel that is missed because to be quite frankly and honest, we like to sit up before our congregation, read a couple passages of scripture, bounce around and not really dig in the context of that scripture. And that's just not cool. 
um, one of my Facebook friends on here, her name is Nefernity, I um, shared a post that she made. She was just like, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we missed in the, in the New Testament because we don't appreciate the Old Testament. And even in the New Testament, you read the book of Acts. And all these people did, all the apostles did was they, they devoted them to, themselves to reading the scripture. And anytime they led somebody to Christ, signs and miracles accompanied um, as like a, a billboard and an attention getter to preach the word of Christ. Because in the first century world, it's not like people didn't know about, about, um, about God through the Israelites. It's not like they didn't know about religion. They did. Like I wrote this morning. You know, the black church, and I'll center on the black church because that's where I'm most familiar with. We're familiar with the stories. Uh, we're familiar with our favorite passages of scripture or whatnot. But what we're not familiar with is the truth and the application of Christ as it pertains to his gospel and to more spiritual things, digging deep into the gospel of Christ. You have some reformed churches that are cool and like that, and they have all of the stuff that makes up a charismatic church as far as, you know, lively music and <laughs> not music that's, you know, quote unquote dead. Um, and, and they still have a good time and focus on Christ. But uh, for the most part, that's that's not so in the black church. We like to hoop, we like to holler, we like to dance. We like to say that you coming out of your situation and disease is not going to touch you and all of this other sensational stuff. But at the end of the day, the black church, and I'm focusing on just the black church because I'm black and I'll be in black churches and black circles. We, we are missing the mark when it comes to the gospel. We just are. We just are missing the mark when it comes to the gospel. And the sad reality is that most of the black church and I'm only talking about the black church because it's my context is on their way to hell because you're not trusting in Christ you're not on your way to hell because you do anything bad necessarily but you're on your way to hell because where's your trust really if all hell broke loose in your life is your trust still in in, in God if you got the coronavirus is your trust in in God no matter what happens is your hope in the fact that your leader said that you ain't gonna catch it or is your hope in the fact that no matter if you catch it or not your salvation is secure and your soul is secure in Jesus Christ is your hope in the fact that if you tithe a certain amount that you're going to get it back is your hope in the fact that if you if you tithe your money is secure and there's a hedge around your life is your hope in your works or is your hope in Jesus? Is your hope in your life being perfect? Or is your hope in Jesus? Because a lot of times in church, you know, we talk about the, not having the pride of life and the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. But, you know, honestly, stop, Zoe. Honestly, in churches, all we do is we spiritualize the pursuit of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of the life. We do. We spiritualize it. Oh, if you tie this amount of money, your money is protected, you know, million flow and all this other stuff. You know, sickness won't touch your body. If you come over yeah. to God's side, if you pray enough, if we fast enough and all of this other stuff, okay. it won't yeah. touch you. And there's plenty of churches that got plenty of members that's got COVID and it's not not um, not saying nothing about it. There's plenty of pastors whose churches got got COVID and they probably said they wouldn't. And nobody is bold enough to say I was wrong and, 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 you know, people are affected by this. And I get it because the blood is on your hands or whatever. That's why we got to be careful, you know. At the, at the very onset of this thing, I was, I was like, where are all y'all? You know, Roddy Howard Brown got, got basically arrested because he stuck to his guns and still had services. And when the rubber met the road, these churches that were talking all big and bad about, you know, you protected by the blood are closing down. And following the government's orders, but I thought you said that it wasn't going to touch you. So if it wasn't going to touch you, then why are you closing down? And so I came on there about that. You know, there was a whole dramatic uh, kind of fallout about that, about what I said. But I, I mean it to this day, and I mean it then. You know, you you, you talk about 
uh, sickness won't touch you and no weapon formed against you shall proper and prosper and all of this stuff. Listen, your hope should not be on not getting a virus. Your hope should not be on not being broke. Your hope should not be on anything else but Jesus. And like once again, I said, I'm referencing the black church because these are the circles that I run in. Our hope is not in Christ. Our hope is on this life. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. All we're doing is we're spiritualizing it. And it's time to stop. It's time to stop playing. Real lives are at stake. Real lives are being lost. And the people who are giving these people false assurance are just sitting there silent. They get to say whatever they want to say. And they get to do whatever they want to do. And then not be checked because they fooled the people and believing that if you check them, that you're somehow dishonoring your leader when you're not. Approach, uh, approach a pastor as a brother is a, is a scripture. And all that means is you come in love and you come with respect, but you still say what you got to say. And in this day and age of the church, it's like so many people have been fooled into not speaking, into not, into not calling their leaders on the carpet because somehow if you're a leader that means that you don't have to answer to your people which is flaw because you answer to God and if you answer to God you answer to God for the people you can't hold honor over my head and say that I gotta honor and that I can't say nothing about how it looks from me and from my vantage point about about what's going on and how people are treated or or, or what the response is to things that are going on in the world, what it is. You can't. And, you know, it's like, it's a, it's an extension of slavery, man. It's an extension of slavery. It's like, you know, it's like uh, a, a slave master who's who's black lording over the people. And that's, that's what it's like. Like, no, nah, if people got questions, you ask questions. If, if, if you said that, such and such won't happen and it does address that because not to doesn't really paint you in a good light anyways i came on here to talk about how most people that's in church white church black church hispanic church whatever are going to hell because their trust is in religion just like the Pharisees and Sadducees back in Jesus' time when he walked the earth on the, in the first century. As it is, as it was in the first century, so it is in the 21st, 22nd century in the church today. It still didn't change. If you don't ultimately trust in Jesus for your hope and your salvation and for your sanctification, you are on your way to hell because your hope is not in Jesus Christ. And the truth about the matter is, the just bare, blunt, forced facts about the matter is, is that in the large context of churches today, no matter what nationality you are, our hope is not in Jesus Christ. Our hope is in what we do right. Our hope is in, is in what we don't do wrong. Our hope isn't in Jesus. And you know another reason why I know that? Because why is it that the stigma, that why is it that the stigma for sinners coming in is that they got to get their life right? You don't got to get your life right to come to church. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And what, what happens, though, is we take the fact of our process that God has us going through on sanctification and try to impose it on sinners that are just coming into church, not even coming to Christ. It's like sinners come into our sphere and we try to load them with these heavy burdens that we can't even carry ourselves like paul said you know you got people gentiles that are coming to christ and then and then there's um you know people from jerusalem that come down no you got to be circumcised if you want to get into heaven and it's just like no no you don't have to be circumcised we couldn't even bear the burden of of trying to get right on our own and now we lay heavy burdens on other people and if we were all honest about it, we didn't clean ourselves up. So what we don't we don't have we don't have the latitude to tell other people what they need to do, because while we were just in sin, Christ came for us. And if we are perpetuating, sit on the toilet. If we are perpetuating, it's okay. 
It's okay. Okay, all right. You don't want to? I'm about to go. But if we are perpetuating the lie that you have to do something in order to be saved or accepted by God, then what is your salvation? What is your understanding of salvation really? Why do sinners and people that are on the outside think that they have to act or conduct or dress a certain way to come into the sphere of the people that claim be, to be righteous? I find a problem with that. I find a problem with that. And that's why I say that most people in church are on their way to hell. Because where's your hope? Where's your hope? Oh, you got to do something in order to be saved. No, you don't. Christ is the one that saves you. He's the one that sanctifies you if you want to be all honest about it. You do not have to do anything but believe. You don't. You don't have to do anything but believe. And for us to put heavy weights on other people about what they have to do, for us to even talk about what people have to do in order to be saved, that is a red flag to your salvation. And I question your salvation. If you believe that you have to do something to get into heaven, I question that. And most people believe they have to do something in order to get to heaven. And if they believe that they have to do something in order to get to heaven, you're on your way to hell. If you believe you have to do something, any other thing other than believe in the Lord Jesus Christ in order to get into heaven, you are on your way to hell.